Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we'll discuss about the Euler's product representation of Riemann zeta functions, known as the Euler product formula. It has the ultimate significance in the field of number theory as this formula paved the way for its further development. Let's get going. To start with, we quickly review the definition of Riemann zeta function. A Riemann zeta function, denoted as zeta s, is defined for any complex variable s as zeta s equals sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 divided by n raised to the power of s, where the real part of s is greater than 1. A Riemann zeta function, apart from infinite sum, can also be expressed as an integral and as an infinite product which is more importantly known as the Euler's product formula. The Euler's product formula states that for a real variable s greater than 1, we have zeta s is equal to product over all primes p of reciprocals of 1 minus p to the power minus s. This representation is a way to factorize the zeta function into terms associated with prime numbers. To prove this, let's begin with the definition of zeta function for a real variable s greater than 1. The first step is to multiply the zeta function by its second term, that is, 1 by 2 to the power s. This gives 1 by 2 to the power s zeta s is equal to 1 by 2 to the power s plus 1 by 4 to the power s plus 1 by 6 to the power s, and so on. Next, we find out 1 minus 1 by 2 to the power s zeta s which is done by subtracting the second equation from zeta s which is mentioned in the equation 1. As we can see, the terms containing even numbers in the denominator get cancelled out. Therefore, we have 1 minus 1 over 2 to the power s zeta s equals 1 plus 1 over 3 to the power s plus 1 over 5 to the power s plus 1 over 7 to the power s plus 1 over 9 to the power s, and so on. We repeat the same process with this equation number 3, where we again multiply both sides of the equation by its second term, that is, 1 over 3 to the power s. On doing this, we get 1 over 3 to the power s times 1 minus 1 over 2 to the power s, zeta s equals 1 over 3 to the power s, plus 1 over 9 to the power s, plus 1 over 15 to the power s, and so on. Mark this as equation number 4. While repeating the same process, we have to subtract equation 4 from equation 3. This provides us the value of 1 minus 1 over 3 to the power s times 1 minus 1 over 2 to the power s, zeta s, which is equal to 1 plus 1 over 5 to the power s, plus 1 over 7 to the power s, plus 1 over 11 to the power s, and so on. So, if I summarize the entire iterative process, we see that every time we include a prime number on the left-hand side, as you can see, the elements are removed which are having the multiples of that prime number. Like in the first equation, the elements having multiples of 2 are removed. In the second equation, the elements having multiples of 2 and 3 are knocked off. Similarly, in the third equation, the elements having multiples of 2, 3, and 5. Here we note that the iterative process sieves the right-hand sides of every single equation obtained after applying its algorithm which cumulatively multiplies the elements of the form 1 minus 1 over p to the power minus s, where p is prime. Hence, if we iterate this process infinitely many times, we get the expression of a product of terms, each involving prime numbers raised to the power of s, where each term subtracts the reciprocal of that prime's power from 1, multiplied by zeta s is equal to 1. The product of these terms is actually the product over all primes p of 1 minus p to the power minus s. On sending the product to the right-hand side of the equation, we finally derive the Euler product formula. There is an alternate way to demonstrate the validity of this equation. The use of algebraic ideas in this approach simplifies the proof considerably. By the definition, we already know that the Riemann zeta function can be expressed as a Dirichlet series as follows. 
This series here on the right-hand side has a simple description about its convergence, which can be done by p-test. If we recall the p-test, which provides us a straightforward rule for the convergence of p-series, the series given above will converge if s is greater than 1, and hence will define a function. Now we consider the expansion of the term on the right-hand side of the formula to be proved, that is, the reciprocal 1 minus p to the power minus s, where we'll be using the binomial theorem. If we replace a, b, and n with 1, minus p to the power minus s and minus 1 respectively in the formula, we get 1 over 1 minus p to the power minus s equals 1 plus 1 over p to the power s plus 1 over p to the power 2s, and the series continues. Here, the series is a geometric series with 1 as the first term and 1 over p to the power s as the common difference. So, it is having the general term in the form 1 over p to the power ms, where m is an integer from 0 to infinity. This series can also be written in a concise form as sigma running for m from 0 to infinity, 1 over p to the power ms. Using this for a sequence of prime numbers p1, p2, p3, etc., we write the series expansions for each reciprocal of 1 minus p to the power minus s. On multiplying these terms all together for k prime numbers p1, p2, up to pk, by using multiplication of series, we get the product equal to the sum over all m1, m2, up to mk equals 0 to infinity of 1 divided by p1 to the power m1, times p2 to the power m2 times up to pk raised to the power of mk, all raised to the power of s. But from the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, each natural number and can be expressed uniquely as a product of primes. So by using this theorem, we get the product from m from 1 to k of the reciprocal of 1 minus pm to the power minus s is equal to the sum over n from 1 to pk of 1 over n to the power s. Now the thing which is left to be proven that zeta s is equal to limit k tends to infinity product from m from 1 to k of the reciprocal of 1 minus pm to the power minus s. As I discussed earlier in the beginning of this proof that the sum over n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power s is convergent, by the definition of convergence of series, for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a natural number n with n greater than or equal to n such that sum over n not to infinity of 1 over n to the power s is less than epsilon. Now, to see how zeta s converges to the given limit, we find the value of mod of zeta s minus the product from m from 1 to k of the reciprocal of 1 minus pm to the power minus s. From the definition of zeta s and the equation that we derived earlier, this becomes mod sum over n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power s minus sum over n equals 1 to pk of 1 over n to the power s. The second series is naturally a part of the Riemann zeta function series. By subtracting terms, we retain those for which the values of each n are integers greater than pk. Consequently, this expression becomes equal to the modulus of the sum over n from pk plus 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power s. By the triangle inequality, this will be less than or equal to the sum over n from pk plus 1 to infinity of mod 1 over n to the power s. On a side note, if we considered s as a complex variable, where we have sigma as the real part and mu as the imaginary part of s, then on putting this value in n to the power s, we use the properties of exponential and logarithmic functions to which we get e to the power sigma log n times e to the power i mu log n. Further, by de Moivre's theorem, e to the power i mu log n can be written as cos mu log n plus i sine mu log n. Then, 
n to the power s equals e to the power sigma log n times cos mu log n plus i sine mu log n. Therefore, mod n to the power s is equal to the square root of e to the power 2 sigma log n times cos square mu log n plus sine square mu log n. But cos square mu log n plus sine square mu log n is equal to 1. So, mod n to the power s equals e to the power sigma log n. And again, by the properties of exponential and logarithmic functions, mod n to the power s equals n to the power sigma. Here we've taken s as a real variable, so mod n to the power s equals n to the power s. From this, we obtain that this summation will be equal to sum over n equal to pk plus 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power s. Also, at the beginning of this part of the proof, I talked about the convergence of the Riemann zeta function series. If we take the natural number n not equal to pk plus 1, we get the sum for n ranging from pk plus 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power s less than epsilon for each n greater than or equal to n. Hence, for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a natural number n such that mod zeta s minus the product over m equal to 1 to k of reciprocal of 1 minus pm to the power minus s is less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to n. This means that zeta s converges to the product over m equal to 1 to k of reciprocal of 1 minus pm to the power minus s. This finally leads to zeta s is equal to limit k tends to infinity the product over m equal to 1 to k of the reciprocal of 1 minus pm to the power minus s. Therefore, using a different approach, we establish Euler's product formula. To summarize, if we discuss about the better approach to derive the formula, both of the methods, in my opinion, are relatively easy. The first method provided by Euler is straightforward and uses simple algebra. You can definitely try the first one if you prefer more simplicity and you are comfortable with series expansions, but some practice of the iterative part is necessary. Speaking about the second method, it is more concise in its approach. While it provides insight, there's one thing you must keep in mind that in order to prove convergence of series, an in-depth knowledge is required about the topics concerned. So you should definitely try out these two proofs of the Euler's product formula. It's certainly a mathematical revelation that transcends disciplines, revealing deep connections between seemingly unrelated concepts. Before the end of this video, here's where you come in, hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell and like, share, and invite others to explore my more math insights. If you've got any questions or want to share your favorite math concept, drop a comment below. See you next time.